Dithering is a process of making small, random, incremental changes and alignments to an image to help stacking programs figure out and remove noise within an image. Dithering is essential to avoiding problems such as walking noise and helps a great deal with managing most other kinds of noise. It's so essential, in fact, that honestly, I couldn't imagine doing astrophotography without doing dithering. Recently, I got my SCT out of mothballs and equipped it with a Player One Phoenix filter wheel and Player One Ares M camera. This is a very different rig from the previous setup that I had on the mount, a Williams Optics 81mm telescope that was operating at 447mm focal length with a flattener reducer. Putting a rig on the mount with such different parameters is going to require changing how PHD2 goes about dithering. It's been quite a while since I put a different rig on the mount and and I couldn't remember where I was supposed to enter the dithering changes, as well as the formula to calculate the dithering ratio. After about an hour, I finally found the information in two different places, in PhD and Nina documentation. So I thought I'd make a quick video to try to bring all the information together and to explain how to calculate dithering. The first thing to do is go into PhD2. Top left, go to the guide menu and select it. Then select advanced settings. The advanced settings submenu will show up. At the very bottom of the menu, you'll see dither settings. Typically, you want to go with the defaults. So, make sure your mode is on random. Below that, make sure the RA only box is unchecked. You would only use that in special circumstances, such as if you had a mount that had some problems. And, if using Nina, it is almost always best to leave your scale at 1.0. According to PHD2's own information, it's best to make any changes in Nina. Click OK, and you're done with the PHD2 side of things. Then pop over to Nina. When you have Nina open, go over to the Equipment tab, top left. In the sub-tabs just beside it, go down to the guider icon, click it. Now we aren't actually connected to the telescope right now, so you see some error messages on the right, just ignore those. Any specific settings and calibrations that you need to adjust should be done in Nina under the guider menu. We'll find those settings top right. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Also bear in mind that to make actual changes, you must be connected to your equipment. Right now, I have not connected because this video is just for teaching purposes. These are your dithering settings. Dither pixels top left is a key thing to look at. Here, you'll adjust how many pixels PHD2 dithers based on the observations of the guide camera. And when it comes to dithering, this is one of the most important settings. The thing to bear in mind is that in this setting, you are adjusting pixels of change according to the perceptions of your guide camera. And these perceptions are based on the focal length of whatever optical tube your guide camera is using and the pixel size of the guide camera. The number of pixels of dithering that the imaging camera perceives will also be based on focal length. In this case, the focal length of the optical tube assembly and likewise the pixel size of the imaging camera. PHD2 recommends dithering the equivalent of 10 pixels on the imaging camera. So what you need to do is calculate the ratio between what the guided camera and the imaging camera perceive, and then figure out how many pixels you actually need to change for the guide camera to affect 10 pixels of dithering on the imaging camera. It's not that hard, actually. In fact, this can be calculated with a very simple formula. Open parentheses, pixel size, over telescope focal length, close parentheses, times 206.265. You need to calculate this for both your guide camera and its optical tube, as well as your imaging camera and its optical tube. And of course, bear in mind that if you're using an off-axis guider, then the optical tube for the guide camera is the same as the optical tube for the imaging camera. So really the only relevant difference here will be the pixel sizes of the two cameras. I'll go through this with my refractor setup, a Williams Optics 81 millimeter telescope with a 200mm guide scope, and a Player One Uranus-C primary imaging camera with 2.9 micrometer pixel size, and a Xena-M guide camera with 5.86 micrometer pixel size. Let's calculate first for the telescope and the primary imaging camera. The pixel size of the Uranus-C is 2.9 micrometers. There is a reducer on the telescope, getting its focal length to 447 millimeters, so we divide by that. This yields 0.006, which will multiply times 206.265. And we get an answer of 1.33. Now let's calculate for the guide scope and the guide camera. We'll use the same formula.
pixel size of the Xena M is 5.86 micrometers, and we'll divide that by the guide scope's focal length of 200 millimeters. That answer will then be multiplied by 206.265, yielding a final result of 6.04. We'll then use the Williams Optics Urena C outcome and the guide scope Xena M outcome to determine the ratio that indicates how much a pixel of dithering according to the guide camera will affect how much dithering is perceived by the imaging camera. We'll just divide the guide scope outcome by the Williams Optics telescope outcome and we get a ratio of 4.516. This means that every pixel of dithering according to the guide camera will affect just over 4.5 pixels of dithering according to the imaging camera. So in the dither pixel box in Nina, an entry of 2 pixels would cause 9 pixels of dithering on the imaging camera, and an entry of 3 pixels would cause 13.5 pixels of dithering on the imaging camera. Some astrophotographers differ in their opinions about just how much one should dither, and I've read very cogent arguments for dithering as little as 5 pixels to as much as 20 to 30 pixels. I tend to find PHD 2 standard 10 pixel recommendation to be adequate. I'm not a real stickler about that though, and with the 81mm telescope with its 447mm focal length, I've had it set for ages at 3 pixels of dithering according to the guide scope, which makes for 13.5 pixels of dithering according to the imaging camera, well, for about as long as I've been using it, and that's yielded excellent results. So, back in Nina, under Equipment, Guider, Settings, Dither Pixel, you would enter 2-3 to three pixels of dithering depending on your preferences. Let's do another practice run. This time I'll walk through calculating the dither necessary for the 8-inch SCT using an off-axis guider. To determine the appropriate dither pixels entry for the Celestron 8-inch telescope, I'll begin by entering the pixel size of the Aries M camera, 3.76 micrometers, and divide that by the focal length of 1280 millimeters. The outcome will once again be multiplied by 206.265, and the result is entered as our C8 outcome. Now we'll use the same formula to calculate for the guide camera. The Xena M has a pixel size of 5.86 micrometers, and since it's set in an off-axis guider, it's using the main scope for the guide scope as well, so the focal length is the same, 1280. That outcome is again multiplied by 206.265, and that becomes our guide outcome entry. We'll then use the imaging camera and the guide camera outcomes to determine the ratio that tells us how much a pixel of dithering according to the guide camera will affect dithering as perceived by the imaging camera. As before, divide the guiding assembly outcome by the imaging assembly outcome, and the result is 1.560, meaning that for every pixel of movement perceived by the guide camera, 1.560 pixels of dithering will be perceived by the imaging camera. If our goal is to dither 10 pixels on the imaging camera, we can then just divide 10 by 1.560, indicating we need to effect 6 to 7 pixels of dithering on the guide camera to effect about 10 pixels of dithering on the imaging camera. I think I'll lean a little to the high side and set the dither pixels to 7, which will achieve just under 11 dithered pixels on the imaging camera putting me almost exactly in the ballpark of PHD2's recommendations. For convenient reference, here is the entire dithering calculation formula in total. That to me is the most complicated part, and if you understood it, you're pretty well good to go here. We'll quickly go over three other factors that are particularly relevant for successful dithering. Whenever Nina and PHD2 collaborate to initiate a dither, your mount and telescope assembly will make an infinitesimally small movement, virtually invisible to the naked eye. But still, it will be enough to initiate some vibrations within the system. The minimum settle time parameter defines how long the system should wait after a dither to let those vibrations subside. After that, PHD2 will attempt to resume guiding. And the settled pixel tolerance setting will define how much tolerance of vibration will be allowed, which will help determine if the minimum settle time is long enough. When PHD2 attempts to resume guiding, if it determines that vibration causes more than 1.5 pixels worth of vibration, another minimum settle time wait will be initiated to allow those vibrations to subside. You can increase or decrease the wait for the minimum settle time 
as well as increase or decrease the acceptable pixel tolerance setting. The settle timeout setting will define how long in total Nina and PHD2 will delay shooting a new exposure in hopes that the system properly settles. If more than that allotted time has passed and guiding is still not within the tolerance of the settle pixel tolerance setting, Nina will go ahead and initiate another exposure. That's important because transient tissues such as wind can also cause vibration. The rest of the settings are for special occasions that are outside the scope of this video. What really matters now is, if I've explained this well and correctly, you have a better idea of how to set up for dithering in PHD2 and Nina, and in particular, just how much dither pixels you should set. I'm a big believer in knowing how to do everything for yourself. It's what gives you the most control over the imaging process, as well as later on, the image development and editing process. But there is a very handy online tool at astrohowto.com called the Interactive Dithering Calculator, which will make these calculations for you. You'll find the link below, beneath the description of this video. So, if you prefer to avoid juggling the math, or don't feel you want to or need to get answers down several decimal places, this tool is a quick and excellent option to determine your dithering, and the truth is, probably it's just fine. Like I said, I have never found it necessary to really be a super stickler about how many pixels to dither. As long as you're somewhere in the ballpark between 10 and 20 pixels, I find that works out fine almost all the time. And just for fun, here is the very first shot that I ever shot with that Ares M after setting up everything, including the dithering. I have to say, I'm really pleased. The weather was working against me in that it was intensely cold at minus 22 C. The firmware of the electronic filter wheel was in the process of being updated by the engineers at Player One as I shot this, and this was just supposed to be a calibration shot. I honestly wasn't expecting something this nice. But never look a gift horse in the mouth, as they say. So now that you've mastered dithering, have fun and get out there and shoot the skies even better.